What is going on, everyone? Casey Adams here. Welcome back to the Rise of the Young podcast. Today, we have Thomas Rodriguez here with us. Thanks so much for coming on the show, brother. <laughs> Glad to be here, man. So you just flew in to Scottsdale. We're doing the interview in person, yes. and this is the first time that we've met in person, man. Yeah. I'm super excited about it. It's been a... Uh... I would say it's long overdue. Yeah, for sure. I know that we've been connected for quite some time, but I'm amazed by your story and everything you're doing with Amazon Automation, and I'm sure we'll dive into that. But we talked at breakfast. You said you're from Boston. Yeah. I'd love for you to take us back to your early childhood years and overall bring us to the point where you started your first business. Wow, okay. Well, I'm 33. So, you know, I've been in, I've been in Florida now since I was... Uh, in about six years. But prior to that, I worked in, you know, as far as jobs and my career, I worked in the blue collar industry a lot. I've done even fast food, McDonald's, Burger King, yep. Taco Bell, uh, warehouses, Get temp, a little closer. Jobs, temp jobs. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, temp jobs. Uh, I've literally had more jobs than birthdays, you know, and it's crazy. But if even even speeding up a little, or should I say rewinding a little bit before that, you know, you're talking about going back childhood and all that other stuff, but, you know, there was at one point I was homeless. I was in and out wow. of juvie at 14 years old, never graduated high school, and, you know, I didn't really know what direction I was going to go with my life, you know what I mean? Um, because I didn't graduate again, like I said, I didn't go to college, and I started my entrepreneur journey uh, once I kind of got on my feet a little bit at the age of 24. Okay. And it was literally four or five months prior to that that I had, like, two jobs at the same time. And I just found out, too, a couple months before that, that my ex-wife at that time, we were expecting a child. My, my daughter, who's eight now. Wow. So my mindset back then was if, if I can't provide for myself right now and I'm struggling, how am I suppo supposed to provide for another human being? Yeah. You know, scary times. Uh, <laughs> totally. no, no, no mom or parent or, or, or father should have that feeling of how am I going to provide for another human being? It's just, it's, it's not yeah. a good feeling at all. So around the age of 24, I literally risked, you know, the credit cards that I had. I was maxing out cards. I, I stumbled across making money online. I didn't know anybody making money online. You know, <laughs> traditionally you hear, at least back in the day, because I was, you know, really arrogant to it and I didn't really know anything about making money online, I just, the words that you would hear is scam or is it legit yeah. or stuff like that. That that was my mindset. But at the same time, I was also broke. And, you know, one thing I even realized back then is that you can't be broke and struggling. You got to, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to pick a struggle, should I say. Totally. Like, you got to take a chance. And if you're at the bottom, you know, the only way you can go is up, you yeah. know. So, so you I, dropped out of high school. Yeah, at 17. Okay. Because my mother kicked me out of the house because she was sick of me getting in trouble with the law. Okay. So I think, you know, looking back, it was like, how could you kick me out? We live in Boston. You know how cold it is outside <laughs> yeah, right now? Yeah, dude, I was in Boston last year. It's, it's, <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that's why I'm happy to be in Florida now so we don't have yeah. to deal with the snow and the cold weather. But back then, it was, it was just basically a blessing in disguise, you know? And at 24, I came across cost per acquisition, CPA marketing. And, you know, running ads, trying to get people to sign up for these free trials, Netflix, Blockbuster, yep. you know, on all those things, free trials. I did that for a little while. Made a How did you bucks. come across that type of industry? Because, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening to this. They get bombarded with so many things yes. today from different people. But when you started off like six years ago, right? It, six, seven years oh, ago. It's been, it's been eight, yeah. Uh, eight, eight years eight, ago, no. the whole industry was different, right? Yeah. So how did you come across not only making money online, but marketing and this whole industry coming from someone that dropped out of high school was out on your own at 17. Yeah. Like how does one come across this? You know, it's, it's crazy because back then, and maybe it's still pretty popular now, but I don't use Twitter now, but back in the day okay. I, I was using Twitter pretty heavily. And this guy, he was using the software to tweet to people with certain hashtags and keywords and he sent me, a, it sent like a link that I got tagged in. And, and again, I didn't know anything, but I clicked on it because I was curious. Yeah. <laughs> so when I clicked on it, it took me to this website. Here's this guy with his girlfriend or wife. And it was like, make two, $300 a day from home. And I was like, what, what is this crap? Like, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know any, I don't know anything. So he had his phone number on the website at that point. And so I, I gave him a call. I was like, dude, I just got some link to some <laughs> weird 
looking website and I have no idea what it is. And he's like, no, I'm a real person. We talked for a couple minutes and he had to go because he was, I guess, going out. But anyways, long story short with that, that he called me back later. He walked me through and it kind of explained the process a little bit more outside of what the video already covered. And I was like, okay, well, I have nothing to lose. I'm already broke. Yeah. So, you know, I took a chance. I signed up for some free trials. He made some money. I signed up. I got a link. And I got, I basically, with that link, obviously could do the same thing on some essence, right? Basically promote these free trials, get paid daily. And it definitely took some aggravation. It was yeah. definitely really aggravating because I didn't know where to start. Yeah. You know, once he kind of told me, he's like, now you got to get leads. You got to find ways to generate traffic. So literally after about five days, I almost quit. I was like, all right, this isn't yeah. working. I got yeah. bills to pay. Yep. And <laughs> all, doing all this stuff online isn't paying my bills right now. And, of course, back then, I didn't realize, thinking about long-term, I didn't really realize, okay, well, five days isn't long enough to develop the craft <laughs> to yeah. learn how to do this. So I spent about 18 to 20 hours a day at the computer, Googling every single thing you can think, reading books, trying to learn how to generate traffic. I was going on, uh, I think it was Craigslist back in the day, people who were looking for jobs. This is how yeah. I actually made my first dollar online. It was like for $60 in like three hours. I found people on Craigslist who were looking for jobs and I reverse called them. Mm, and I told okay. them about this opportunity. And again, this was just me just doing my own due diligence yeah. and just trying to get creative. So that's where I started. And I did that for you know four to six months. And I was, okay. after a little while, I was getting the rhythm. I was making YouTube videos. I was showing proof. I was showing testimonials. And then before you know it, it started kind of flowing. Yep. It was just, you know, I was just on a, on a <clears> rhythm. <throat> and then I eventually got into multi-level marketing. Got it. Basically, I, the company I got involved in basically taught people how to market. And I was like, well, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Yeah, right? yeah. So I have to spend a little money to get this information. But I wanted to, you know, accelerate my results a lot faster and learn how to develop a craft. Because once I seen it was possible to make money yeah. online. Became addicted. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got addicted. It was like a laptop lifestyle, yeah, so yeah. to speak. When and did you come across Amazon? Because I know like on from following you, Amazon yes. Automation and something that you talked about today coming up on Q4 about yes. Black Friday and how, yes. you know, half the retail stores in the U.S. were shut down and everything's online. When did Amazon come into your life and why did you decide to choose that business model as something that you would strive in? So Amazon came shortly after I quit multi-level marketing. I was in multi-level marketing for 16 to 18 months, give or okay. take, maybe a little bit more. I actually had some success and I met a lot of good people that I surrounded myself with that really helped my mindset develop, you know, just a, a deeper <clears throat> understanding of how to invest my money, yep. spending your money on things that are going to make you more money and stuff like that. So in 2014, I stumbled across, you know, the whole Amazon dropship. And first it was really eBay. And yep. I was like, okay, well, eBay is great, but Amazon's a bigger platform than eBay. So I was like, okay, if I could do this on eBay, I could figure out how to do this on Amazon. So a lot of the stuff that I learned was just through my own trial and error. Like I didn't have a mentor to teach me. Yep. I didn't have nothing like that. It was just through my own blood, sweat, and tears trying to figure this out. I, I literally wanted to break my laptop about 20, <laughs> 30 times, like nonstop. It was frustrating. And before you know it, like if you were to speed up just a little bit of trying to do the Amazon in and out, uh, it was about a year, year and a half. I was really perfecting the craft. I was hiring people overseas to manage my store for me. Yep. And then I started showing off my results. Like on my social media, I was like, you know, it's not going to hurt. Just show people, inspire, motivate. Yeah. Before you know it, people started hitting me up like, can you teach me? So I was like, nah, nah, I'm good. I want to kind of, you know, just do this. I, I don't really want to teach. <clears throat> but then people kept asking and asking. I was like, okay, well, it's multiple streams of income. Yep. At the end of the day, no one ever really has one stream of income. You, you have multiple streams. That's what you're supposed to do. So I started teaching. It was great. Did that for about two years. Had a lot of success for people who I taught going on making money on Amazon themselves. And then I realized I did that for a little while. And it's been about two and a half years now for the automation part. I realized back then that a lot of people are also lazy. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of these people, they wanted to learn how to make money, but they didn't want to put in the work. Yep. So then the idea of like, okay, well, I have a team that's automating stores for me. What if I could put some type of system or program together that can just do the same concept for people who just want to pay for a, a done-for-you service? Yeah. They don't have to find the products, list the products, ship them out, handle the customer service to do any of that. And then before you know it, Amazon Automation was 
blossom. It's been a little over two and a yeah. half years now. And we're having a lot of success with it, building the infrastructure better and better constantly every day. We have a lot of clients having a lot of success with it. And That's it's awesome. I guess the best way to, you know, kind of really break down my service is just, it's no different than property management. Like somebody buys a villa, condo, apartment building, they hire property management yeah. to handle the life work. <laughs> totally. For, for so, it to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and so the, the person that owns it can be on the beach of the world. They could do whatever they want. It's the same concept with my service that people are basically paying for a storefront <clears throat> that's literally yep. done by me and my team of now six plus years. So very I mean, cool. Yeah. What is the key to becoming successful in Amazon? Right. I mean, I'm, there's thousands of people that are millions of people that are selling on Amazon. Right. What, what separates people that are successful at it versus people that work on it and then just give up? If you're not talking about the, obviously the automation part if people are just trying to learn it themselves is Amazon is a different type of beast. Obviously we all know that everyone's constantly shopping. Like right now, yep. like you said, black Friday, cyber Monday, things are pretty much being shut down and totally. your grandmother and your mother and everybody's now shopping online that wasn't really comfortable shopping online maybe like seven, eight, nine months ago. Yeah. Now they're forced totally. to shop online. So I think the biggest difference that separates the people who are successful and not successful is just the consistency because I think like any business or if you go to the gym, somebody goes to the gym, they don't get the results in two weeks, they quit. Yep. So it's the same thing, I think, with Amazon. People come in here and think Amazon's just going to be, okay, I'm going to list two products and I'm hoping to be rich. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not always like that. It still takes work. And I think the people that are doing it and real successful at it, they, they, they found what works and they stuck with it over a period of time. Yep. And anyone else, if they quit after two weeks, it's probably because they, they didn't understand the fact that business has ups and downs. And that's where you have to, you know, obviously develop your mindset. Love that. How have you seen the transition, especially earlier this year when just Amazon as a company has been thriving during these times? How have you felt the shift in the market as someone that's, you know, does Amazon automation, works with a lot of clients? Like how has the last eight months been for you and how, what changes have you seen for people that are out there looking to start a store and sell on Amazon? I've noticed, you know, when the whole COVID, you know, happened, right? When, when this whole pandemic happened, it was, it was like, okay, a lot of businesses are going to take like a hit right now. And I, I thought that was about my business too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but the total opposite happened. Literally the business was already booming. We already had a lot of happy clients making some incredible profits. But ever since it happened again, like I said, it forced people to shop online, yep. which then therefore obviously tripled a lot of my clients results even faster. So in, in some essence, obviously I feel for what's going on in the world. It's crazy. Uh, you know, nobody's really happy, obviously with what's <laughs> going on, but it, it did the opposite for my business. It actually helped excel my business on another level for my clients. So I can, I can truly say that I know my clients are happy. Yeah. Yeah. The results for that sure. They're, they're making with the service, but uh, it, yeah, it's, it's done the opposite. That's very cool. I found it fascinating because you said you were homeless, right? Yes. What age were you homeless? 17. 17. Like during this transition of becoming successful and having to struggle across your journey, what advice do you give to young entrepreneurs today that are, you know, listening to this podcast, just starting their journey because you've really had the ups and the downs and you've lived it and you've learned through it. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone that's starting their journey today, especially during 2020 where things are a lot shifted than they were before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... I guess the advice that I would give anyone is that, you know, and some of it's going to sound real cliche. So it's, it's not, a lot of times people ask me, what's the secret to success? And it's, I'm not going to say anything that's always going to be like, oh my God, I've, I've never heard <laughs> that. I've never heard that before. That's insane. It, it's usually just something that people overlook, right? So in my opinion, it's, it's, it's just about consistency. And like I said, it, it really just falls. I, I really stick with that word consistency because if, if you're not, if you're not going to be consistent at something, you're never going to get good at it. And if you do something long enough, you know, six months, a year, two years, you're eventually going to develop a craft and you're going to get good at it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter yep. how many times you fail, you are going to fail your way forward. It's just inevitable. Yep, like, totally. I mean, you, and I would recommend anyone that's watching this video is to, you can either do it the hard way and learn a lot of this stuff yourself, right? Which is obviously one of the ways that I did a lot of this. Yep. But obviously, the other way to speed and excel your results is to hire someone who's already done it. Yep. So paying for a coach, a mentor, 
somebody who's already getting the results that you want. And by doing so, you're literally going to shave off a lot of time from the learning curve. But again, if, if for some people that are on here, if you don't have a lot of capital to begin with, obviously maybe doing it yourself up front so you make a little bit of money so you can afford the, the person that you want to pay for mentorship. <laughs> Um, yep. I, I wish I paid for a mentor back in the day, like on a, like a larger scale. Totally. I paid for somebody like I know when I first started, but it was more for motivational, like mindset stuff. And, you know, one thing I, I know now is that your peace of mind will always become before your piece of pie. Mm. You know, so what do you mean by that? That you have to make sure that your mindset is in order before you worry about making the money. Because if you yep. if you have even a little bit of money but you don't know how to spend it. You don't know where to spend it or you don't know how to really put in the good work ethic. I mean, it, it's just going to be a waste anyway. Totally. So make sure that your mindset is there and you're willing to put in the work. What did you do early on to develop that mindset when you were coming up? So that multi-level marketing <clears throat> company that had gone in, they actually had what they call an in a circle product. And basically it was kind of like podcasts on some level. It was them bringing on some of their top earners and people who could tell their stories and, yep. <clears throat> I would be on these calls every Monday, listening to these calls to stay motivated. And when I wasn't doing that, I was reading some books at the time. And on top of that, then I was watching like Eric Thomas, Jeremy. Love Ron. Eric. <laughs> yeah. Listen to a lot of them on YouTube, which is obviously free. And just watch their videos and just study what they're talking about and doing. Because again, motivation doesn't last, right? You know, that's why they recommend totally. it every day. Yep. So, <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's, that's what I did. And I think... If I didn't have that, I don't know if I would have had the courage to keep going because you need the motivation and you need to surround yourself with like-minded people, not, not people who want to party every weekend, who have nothing going for them, but people who, who are on the same mission to grow, build empires, change lives, change the world, whatever their vision is, as long as you're with those people that are on that same track totally. record. How have you been able to just build that culture and that network of people in your life. Cause you know, the quote, I love it. It's like your network is your net worth. Right. And for me, building relationships, doing things like this in the podcast, like that's what I'm motivated by. Yes. How had, how did you do that early on? Right. Like for me, three years ago, four years ago, when I got into all of this, like social media is the platform. I know yeah. that you've been crushing it, building your brand, but I became obsessed with building a brand, making key relationships. And that's what's taught me so many lessons is through the people in the conversations. Yes. But for you, when you started, how did you find those people to, you know, ask questions to and the mentors outside of the company that you're working for, yes. but just independently, right? Like what was your go-to? So back then I utilized obviously my Facebook a, a whole lot. I would add a lot of like people that I would see comment on other posts. I would join these Facebook groups. And yes, the company that I was a part of was really good for motivation but what I also did to take a step even further outside of that was I would go to events and yep. I would start networking. I would start talking, even if whatever they're saying, I'm not really grasping. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to really take everything in, absorb everything and, you know, try to communicate with as many people as I could on the social media platform like Facebook. That really helped me just kind of understand the circle I wanted, the circle I needed you know, the fakes from the real and yep. stuff like that. But that really, again, is, again, cliche. You definitely have to surround yourself with like-minded people. So if you have some money, you go to events, you, you, you read books. And if you do that, like, I mean, everything, I'm not going to say is going to become easy yeah. <laughs> by any means, but it will give you at least that proper mindset to hopefully continue to push forward. Love that. How often do you um, go back to Boston? Not as often as I should. Okay. I'll be honest. Like I'm, I'm a little spoiled now because of the the Florida weather. Yeah, yeah. Where it's uh sunny. Uh, only thing we have to worry about is what hurricanes. Uh, okay. And stuff like that. Is that the only other place you've lived outside of Boston? Yeah, I, okay. I, I I was born and raised, and I've been in Florida now for about five five six years, and I really don't miss the cold. <laughs> I, I think I think if anything, my blood is thinned yeah. out a little bit, so that if I go out there, I'm just I can't handle it yeah, anymore. Yeah, for know? sure. It's been too long. Would you ever move somewhere else or is Florida your spot? Well, I do have two kids, yep. you know, both of my ex-wife and my, my, my daughter's eight. My son is two. And, you know, I've always had this vision. Obviously, it's kind of hard to do it now because me and my ex-wife share joint custody of the kids. But if it was up to me, I would literally like bounce around from a spot every three <laughs> to six months. I would go to Thailand or China or Hong Kong. I would just like travel hop. Like yeah. that's like... 
that's something that I've thought about for years. And obviously, after I thought about it, obviously, I had a kid. And yeah. I, <laughs> I can't obviously do that now. Yeah. I have responsibilities as a parent. But um, I definitely would. But again, I'm a little more restricted just because I have totally. two kids. As a parent, like, what's your mindset towards educating your children especially now with like raising kids as a successful entrepreneur like what's your not game plan but how do you think about that right because for me I have a brother he's 26 he has a kid she's four now and I'm an uncle and I, I I've just seen her grow over the last four years and it's interesting because you know the modern education system I learned nothing what I'm doing today in school and to see how you know colleges are changing to zoom and how the entire economy shifted this past year it's fascinating to think about like the next generation of kids and how they're going to be thinking about education so as a parent like what are you doing to prepare your kids or have you thought about that at all I've thought about it and I'll be brutally honest I'm not as proactive as I should be you know because I think as a parent, sometimes we always keep thinking, oh, we got plenty of time. We got plenty yeah, of yeah. time. <laughs> I do try to educate my daughter, like when we talk about certain things, or sometimes I pick her up from school. She got the kids that are looking at my cars, <laughs> and like, the, oh, nice cars. And my daughter, oh, he likes your car and this and that. And like, and I try to educate her. It's like, as much as I like my nice toys and the stuff like that, I try to educate her though, like, and, and ask her questions. Like, what does she want to do when she grows up? What do you want to be? And her answer is always changing because okay. she's still yeah, constantly totally. growing. <laughs> but I do try to educate her, you know, like with the systems. Like for me, I personally don't believe in college. Just obviously I didn't go. And I just I just feel like, to be honest with you, like if, unless you are going to learn a profession like a nurse, a doctor, a lawyer, or something that you really have to go to college for, it's not necessary. And I try to explain that to my daughter. But I want her, if she wants to go for those things, then I'll yep. support it. Like I'll support it if that's what you want to do, if you're passionate but I do try to educate her a little bit on just a little more entrepreneurship yep. and building businesses. And, you know, but again, I tell her at the end of the day, it's, it's still your responsibility on what you want to do. And at eight, you know, I mean, some kids <laughs> might get it, but you know, it might take another good year or two before certain things start to really click. Um, like, you know, as far as what she wants to do. Yeah, she for sure. Older. Do you have any daily habits that you do every single day or what does your schedule look like? Honestly, as much as I would love to say that I'm as uh, at proactive and have a set schedule, I don't. Um, and that is one thing that I can say that um, I'm not going to say I've struggled with, but I am trying to get a little more organized because, you know, obviously I have systems in play that obviously contribute to my business and stuff like that. So things are getting done regardless. Yeah. But certain things like getting up at a certain time, making sure I do the gym at this time, yeah. <laughs> read at this time and do this and that. That is something that I could truly say that I haven't been as organized as I wanted to. Totally. Um, and it is something I am trying to kind of really lock down a little bit more efficiently because I can see if you're a little more organized in certain areas, it might make your life a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. What's your mindset on building teams? Obviously you brought your team out here to Scottsdale and we talked at breakfast. I was like, that's super cool that you travel with the people that you work with because that's how you create culture, I yes. would say. But what's your thoughts on that building team and just a culture with inside your organization? I think, I think I wouldn't be, I, I think my personal brand wouldn't be where it's at without my team. So bringing my team, you know, around and, they were obviously friends and family before I started really building like more systems and infrastructure in play. So to me, it's, it's a key. It's, 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 it's just like one umbrella. So, you know, if you're, whatever business you're building, I mean, you definitely have to have a solid team. You can't, yep. you can't do it by yourself. You need other people who have different knowledge, different areas of expertise, um, and just good people that you can actually, that you want to be around. Yep. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's my feedback. hundred uh percent. -huh. Has that always been like from building teams and just, you know, having people believe in the vision, especially when it comes to building a personal brand, when did that shift happen for you when it comes to like, Hey, I can't do this alone. I need people to build with as an entire, not only organization, but just as a tribe. Like what was that shift for you when it comes to team building? So I've been obviously building, let's just say my automation empire business, Amazon automation for about two and a half years now. And for quite some time, I was doing this by myself. It was probably about a year, you know, almost probably about a half, give or take. And I was doing it by myself, and I thought I had everything under control, right? You know, but before you knew it, my infrastructure, I started to outgrow my prior infrastructure. And I'm like, I can't do this, yeah. <laughs> you know? So obviously, I had a meeting with my team. And again, they weren't my team at that moment. 
but we all had a discussion. They brought certain things to the table that I was like, you know what? I need this. Yeah. At the end of the day. But because they were already friends and family first, you know, I was a little hesitant because I'm like mixing business and friendships. Totally. That there's a lot of people who it, if they don't have the right circle, <clears throat> it could just be torn apart. Just like that overnight. Yep. I've seen it. So they've been working with me now for about 13, 14 months. And it's definitely been one of the best things Very that's cool. happened to the brand. What's been the biggest lesson you've learned in 2020? Man, you know, I've always believed in multiple streams of income. Always for the last seven years, but I haven't always lived by it, especially when I was just starting to just getting started. Now I have about three, four streams of income outside of obviously my main business. Yep. I think one of the biggest lessons, if we're talking from a business aspect, is that definitely never have all your eggs in one basket because, totally. you, know, you know, we have brick and mortar businesses going out right now and just so many things, even the real estate, you know, in, in environment is like. Even that's like kind of like tanking for a lot of people yep. right now. So it's like you have to always diversify, you know. Um, as far as like family, friends, it's like don't take anything for granted. You know, we got everything going on. Now some people can't even travel overseas to see yeah. certain people that they love, that they want to yep. spend time with. So, you know, freedom is just, it's a, it's a precious and priceless yeah. thing, man. And you've done some traveling. What is it? How many countries have you been to? <sighs> quite a few. Quite, quite a few. At okay. least 20 plus. Yeah. 20 plus. What have you learned from traveling? Because I know the first time I left the country when I was, I think I was 15, I went to China. It was one of the most mind altering experiences for me. And I'd love to hear from you being over 20 plus countries and traveling all over the world. What have you learned from that? And what are the takeaways that you've gotten from those experiences? I would say like some of the takeaways I've taken is just, I like to travel just because life's too short for one. Like, like I said, I, I just turned 33 last month. Yeah. You know, and, Life goes quick. It goes quicker than your 20s, you know? It's just, it's, it's really fast. For me, one of the biggest takeaways is just seeing the different cultures and the, the, the people out there, like, just how everyone and culture just moves and acts different. You know, I've been to so many different countries where, like, the people, they treat you like royalty. <laughs> you know, like, I remember, like, Thailand. Like, I, that's one of, one of my favorite experiences is, like, people out there, they just, they treat you so nice. Like, and it's... I don't know. It was just an incredible experience. Even with my, my service, I went to Bangladesh where uh, part of my team is at. Well, my whole team, should I say. And, you know, a lot of the errors over there is really poor. Yeah. It's really poor. <laughs> so you would think, at least this is how I thought back then, like, oh, okay, I'm going to go out there. And a lot of these people are going to be upset. Like, you know, like they, maybe they don't really, I'm not going to say have much to be happy for. Obviously, they have the health and the family and stuff like that. But certain environments that I went to, it just – it actually shocked me of how many people were able to help each other in need and help. And it was just really eye opening totally. is that like a culture and come up, uh, you know, in a country like that, where it might not be, it might not be in riches or anything like that, but people can come together and form <clears throat> unity. Totally. So it was, it was just eye opening. Just if people, more people even today now come together, just so many more things can get. Okay. Done. What's your thoughts on not only giving back, but getting to the point where, you can give back and you have the financial certainty to provide for other people. It's like, you have this responsibility. What was the shift for you? Right? Because when you're coming up, it's like, you're focused on you. You have yeah, to get your yeah. money, right? You have to make sure your family is good. But now having the opportunity to help other people all over, all over the world, what was that shift for you of thinking? Because it's a mental thing, right? Like you have to, once you check one box, you're on to the next, yeah, right? So course. for you, what was that giving back uh, mentality and where did it come from? I guess, I guess when, when I've looked back on just kind of where I came from, I didn't have a lot growing up, right? I was broke. Um, I, you know, my mom did the best that she could. My father was really not in the picture at all. So my mom was obviously trying to do as much as she can to try to raise me and get me the stuff that I wanted, whether it was materialistic, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. I, the mindset shifted because there was a point when I joined that multi-level marketing company, I was making five figures a month. So I thought I was like, hot <laughs> shit, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I thought I was, you know, like, damn, I'm doing it. Yeah. Soon as I wanted to leave that company because they made some shifts and some changes in their company that I just, certain things didn't align with me anymore. And I was like, okay. So I really timed out and I really didn't do anything for the next six months. And then I saw my income start drastically going back down. And, and again, keep in mind when I was making that money, like I didn't know how to act. Yeah. I was new to money. So when you're new to money, you don't you spend it on dumb stuff that you <laughs> don't need to spend it on, especially when you're young, you know. 
but once once I eventually started getting back on my feet and realizing, and, and I didn't go back to broke, but to me that fear was there. I think that helped shift that mindset because I'm like, okay, like I did all that for me, like all that, how much money that I spent yeah. on stupid countless things that didn't do anything for my bank account, didn't do anything for my life, didn't do anything for my kid's life. Hell, it didn't really do much for anybody else. Once I started getting back on my feet, I think that's kind of where the shift happened. Like maybe do more for the world and then more will potentially come back to you. And even if you don't do it for the reasons of more coming back for you, you're still doing it and you're giving out good energy and good vibes to the universe. Yep. And all you can do from there is just hope that, you know, the stuff that you keep putting up back out, the good energy will come back to you. Love that. Speaking of giving, I want to bring up, you're giving away your Rolls Royce. Talk to me about this. <laughs> that This is a bold statement that yes. when you told me this, I was like, what? We got to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, so we, I've had my Rolls Royce for about, you know, about a year and a half. Okay. I haven't really drove it as much as I've should have, you know? Um, <laughs> and... One of the reasons, I, I'll just start with why, because I know people that are watching this video, you might ask why. And obviously, we, you know, end in the year almost 2020. Huge benefit, obviously, for me as a business owner is a tax write off, right? A tax benefit by just giving it away. That's a huge benefit. <laughs> yep. And the second reason is, is that we have over 570 clients of Amazon automation, right? I've done prizes, I've done giveaways to them, whether it's cash, whether it's discounts off their store, like the, the percentage split that they have to pay us per month. I've done a lot of different stuff. Never given away a car, though. Yeah. <laughs> so for a lot of the people who push my service, a lot of the people who are, have my service or, you know, new clients, I thought, why not do something and just give back? So that's obviously one of the reasons, uh, really the two reasons that I really wanted to do it is, just, again, tax benefits and the fact that, that I can do something more and give back to current clients yeah how, how are you gonna pick the winner we are gonna put all the names because we obviously have this on all spreadsheets and crms and stuff like that we're gonna put everything in there we're gonna put it in a bowl we're gonna do a live an instagram live that's cool and we just shot a video yesterday making sure that we show the title <laughs> of the pick work because last thing i wanted was people to be like oh it's not legit it's yeah, not yeah. real it's a rental even though it's been on my instagram for the last year and a half yeah. so that's a long rental you know what <laughs> I mean? but at the end of the day you know Using it just to, to promote awareness, obviously, for my service and to give back to people, it's just a no-brainer at the end of the day. That's so cool. So, so whoever you pick, they're just going to get the keys to the they're, roles. They're going to get the keys. They'll get the title. I'm going to fly them out personally. We'll obviously document so people can see it. Yep. They'll get everything signed over. They can take it. And obviously, my hopes with that is that somebody doesn't just get it and they just stunt and drive around in a car like that, which is over almost a half a million dollar vehicle that I'm hoping, again, in hopes that they take it and they maybe keep it for a couple of days, a week, two weeks, whatever, but then trade it in so they can get the value of that car, which is still worth a very high six figures. Yeah. And then do something good with it, whether it's invest into another business, for buy sure. some you know, apartment units, uh, or buy more stores, whatever they want to do, it's obviously going to be their money. For sure. So do whatever <laughs> they want. That's, that's my only hope. That somebody doesn't just try to keep it for like a year. And again, it's theirs. They can do whatever they yeah, want. Yeah. But that's my whole that's cool. with, with it. So Very cool. Well, I'm excited. When's the giveaway going down? I'm excited to, to watch you guys do this. <laughs> we, we are running the giveaways currently. And it's going to run for probably till about December. Okay. And then the winner will probably come out in January. That's a good Christmas gift or New Year's gift. <laughs> a nice way to start 2021. Yeah, yeah for sure. Well, so, Thomas, I just want to say that real quick before we wrap it up, where is the best place for everyone to stay in touch with you and to get involved with not only the giveaway, but, but just to follow along your journey from this point on? Uh, very active on my Instagram, at T-Rod. A lot of people pronounce it Trod. It's not. <laughs> it's T-Rod, so it's T-R-O-D. And uh, that's where we're pretty active, but we are trying to diversify our social media to keep expanding as well. For sure. and we just enjoy giving the value to the people, whether they buy the service, they don't. We just want to give value as much as possible. Totally. Just kind of like you're doing with the 100%. podcast. It's just giving value and hopefully even a little bit of the nuggets that you get from this podcast, hopefully you do something life changing with the information that maybe or that changes your life on any level. Love that. And everyone watching or listening, make sure you go follow T-Rod on Instagram. I'll make sure to link it down below. And with that being said, I will talk to you soon.